Hi everyone, welcome back to part two of the textured folded box project. So yesterday, last night, made the project, rolled it out, put some texture on it. Today we're gonna make that into a box. So let's switch cameras and get started. All right, you are going to need the following supplies today. You are going to need your pre-rolled textured piece of clay. You're gonna possibly need your low fire uh, white slip but I would recommend that if you've got vinegar at home that you go ahead and try vinegar. You're gonna need like a teaspoon of it. It's not gonna be not much. So if you are allowed to go steal it from say the kitchen, that would be great. I'm realizing the light situation we got going on here is not spectacular. All right, that's a little better. So I'm gonna stand at this corner so you can see what I'm doing and I'll just move this this way. All right, so at this point, um, my texture is on this side. You can see the clay is still, no, well, maybe you can see. All right, you can see the clay is still very soft. This might be on a, the softer side of doing this, but I'm gonna attempt. Um, you don't want it to get too dry where it's going to crack or fissure or break as you fold the clay up. So I think erring a little bit on the side of wet is better than too dry for this. You also have to be careful that you don't have your clay too wet so that the form won't hold itself as you hold it up on the sides. Now, I'm gonna teach you today a technique since this is our first clay class encounter. Uh, in elementary school, your teacher may have called this scratch to attach. Uh, it's otherwise known as score and slip. So for all the edges that are going to be joined, you need to create a series of scratches or scores going in both directions, side to side and then down on the edges of your clay. And you need to do it on all the edges that are going to touch each other. So you can't just do it on one side, you gotta do it on all of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and not talk while I'm doing it because I will fast forward so that you don't have to watch me do like 10 minutes of scratching and attaching. All right, so we'll come back after I've gotten this. Okay, coming back in now, let me just lift this up and show you what I have done. Do you guys see all the little divots I've created? All right. So I'm actually gonna fold this in so that the texture is on the inside. Uh, remember that I've asked you to create two boxes. One, the texture is going to be in and the other, the box, the texture on the box is going to be out. I don't have any vinegar in the art room, so I'm going to use slip. Uh, remember that this slip doesn't match exactly um, the clay color. It's still low white fire, but this slip was designed for casting. Um, and so it's not an exact match. So how much slip do you need to put on? Well, that's a great question. You want enough that it goes inside all of the little divots. And I personally like a little bit to squeeze out as I join things um, so that I know that I filled in all of those holes. And this sort of acts like the glue, but at the same time, you don't want so much that it bubbles out and creates a mess. Um, Cause that's not a, that's not necessarily a great look. Okay. Uh, one little word of warning. Remember how I told you guys to be careful of your um, corners yesterday? Well, I've been handling mine so much that mine have torn. So when I was scratching, I went ahead and put in a little bit of slip and a little bit of scratch action in those corners to try to um, get them to, uh, you know, hopefully they'll hold. I'm gonna just touch up. I've sort of manhandled this piece a lot, as you guys know. I. Um, had it out in class today and so I've sort of wrecked some of the texture on it. So I'm just gonna try to touch it up in a few spots where I'd like it to be a little deeper, uh, but I think I'm gonna live with it. All right, so these are now scratched and I'm just gonna go ahead and join it. So let me bring it so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna carefully fold up the sides. Oh, you know what I did? I'm an idiot. 
I scratched the wrong side. Oh, shoot. Guys, I wasn't thinking when I did this. I'm sorry. I talked about this earlier in class today and I showed you correctly. Here I just showed you incorrectly. You want to make sure that you're actually scratching and slipping the sides that are connecting, which in this case would be one edge and one side. You know what? This is why we call it practicing art. <laughs> Oh my. All right. So I have joined the inside and I'll run that around the camera around in just a second. And now I'm just going to touch up the outside and I've pressed firmly. Remember that this isn't just making things look pretty. You want the clay to actually join together and seal. And so while I am sort of making it pretty, I've done that only after I'm pretty sure that I've got the clay um, pressed together sort of at the molecular level, if you will, all the way down the side. All right, let me turn this so you can look on the inside. You can see it's joined pretty well. So I'm starting to have my clay sort of uh, crack a little bit, but it'll be all right. All right, let me now quickly, my scores are sort of okay that I had them hang over on this one edge a little bit, so it'll be all right. Just need to deepen them where it's actually gonna join. Please don't make that error, that's, that's my bad. If I had a different pot, I would start over, but I only made one. <laughs> You can see I've got a little bit of slip showing on the inside, so I know I've actually pressed it together. It's sealed, it's bubbled out. There shouldn't be any air holes or gaps in there. Now to finish it nicely on the top, uh, what I've tried to do, oops, and I didn't do it so well, is join the edges together and really sort of solidify them so it becomes one piece. I did it much better here. If you see if I prod this, it's holding together pretty well and that will dry very nicely fire very nicely and you won't really be able to tell that the joint is there. I didn't do this side as well. So I'm just going to smooth it out. All right, let's go ahead and fold up that last side. I've basically got these seams joined, so now I'm just gonna clean it up and make it look a little prettier than it is. Um, I may dampen the sponge down, and as this piece dries, I'm gonna come back and just sort of touch up the sides, the edges, make them look a little bit nicer. Um, you know, things that I have done well on this piece, notice that I flattened as I went, I flattened the bottom and made it square. I didn't just fold up the sides and leave it. Uh, it's important to press that into shape so it holds. Um, other things I think that I've done well, if you look, my edges are all about the same thickness. Um, they are really close. This one's a little thinner over here, but I'm actually pretty impressed because I didn't get down and look at the clay as I was doing it. I was pretty tired and grouchy last night. Um, it was a long day. So I just sort of went with it. Um, unfortunately, that has proven to be okay. Um, you have to imagine this once it gets glazed. And I think a really great way of glazing these pieces with the texture on the inside is to put a lighter texture, or sorry, to put a lighter color and then a darker color on the outside. And then that texture part will just pop. 
Um, one thing I could say about the design, I made these to have beveled edges and I don't see that too much. So you guys may want to make this more of a rounded arch. This is okay. You can tell it's not just square, um, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more on this. So I'll go back and maybe redesign our pattern to give you more of a sort of an impressive edge. But that should do it. I hope you guys found this instructive. Um, and I look forward to seeing what you come up with for tomorrow's class. P.S. One last thing. Always remember on the bottom, you want to put your initials or name or your mark and then the year. And that way I know whose it is and who to get it back to. So don't go too deep. You don't want to go through your wall, but make sure it's readable. All right, that's it. Really by this time.